In this video, we will review over the anatomy of the yellow perch, Perca flavensis. It is also called the lake perch, the bluefin perch, and the raccoon perch. The perch is in the animal kingdom, phylum, chordata, class, actinoptergy. The distinguishing characteristics include a body of a yellowish coloration punctuated by triangular dark stripes. We have scales and two dorsal fins. All the fins are going to be composed of a membrane separated by a bony spine. The perch typically inhabits um, temperate lakes, streams, ponds, and rivers, and young perch tend to feed on small copepods, uh, crustaceans, insects, and fish larvae. The adults typically feed on small fish, mollusks, worms, and crayfish. A perch life cycle typically is between 7 and 9 years, and it can get as large as 11 inches. To some degree, you will be able to determine the age of your perch based on its size. Do remember that females do attain a larger body than males, but you can use your specimen size as a guideline to determine um, the age of your fish. And so here we have a guideline chart to help guide you on the age of your fish. The perch, like all other vertebrates, have a body plan of a head, trunk, and tail. Now this caudal tail fin area here is homocircle, and that means that the upper and the lower lobes are relatively the same size. And this is in contrast to sharks that have a heterocircle tail, meaning that one of the lobes is larger than the other. Uh, now, characteristic of this particular class, they do have bony jaws, a bony skeleton, and they have numerous vertebrae. The body is usually covered with dermal scales, and on the perch, these dermal scales are called tenna scales. And they're flexible and light, but they still provide protection. Now let's start off with right here. We can see the first dorsal fin. And this is going to help to maintain the orientation in the water and provide stability for movement. Now that's the same thing with our uh, second uh, dorsal fin. Our caudal fin here is the perch's um, homocircle fin. And this right here, since the uh, dorsal and the ventral are relatively symmetrical, will allow the, uh, the fish to be thrust forward by propelling the, the fish's body. The anal fin in this area right here, along with the pectoral fin and the pelvic fin, help to maintain the orientation in the water and to provide with stability for movement. It also, uh, you'll notice the um, gill operculum, which are these hard plates that protect the gill. And by moving the operculum, a fish can move oxygenated water through the gills without moving. Also, notice the location of the mouth. Now, the mouth tells us a great deal about the fish. There's typically two types of mouth that occur in bony fish. The surface feeding fish have a superior mouth that faces upward, and that's like this right here where the bottom dwelling fish would have an inferior mouth that faces downward. Right here we'll notice the uh, nostrils. The nostrils detect odor in the water and they lead directly to the olfactory bulb located in the brain. We'll notice the eyes. The uh, eyes are going to receive visual images and the fish will vary according to the depth in which they live. Here we'll see that lateral line, and the lateral line enables the fish to detect temperature and pressure changes and senses water current. I have placed a labeled fish skeleton um, on this video if you need to pause and label any portions of your fish skeleton. However, just note that the uh, skeleton of the perch is very fragile and it's very difficult to isolate. So I would not recommend that you use the specimen to study a skeleton. Um, the skeleton will provide the support to the body. It'll give the muscles a point of attachment. And uh, like all members of the class Actinoptergy, uh, it's going to be composed primarily of bone. So um, while you can see all the structures here, you're not going to get anything like this in your dissection. Now with regard to uh, the muscular system, uh, muscles are divided into three types, smooth muscle, skeletal muscle, and cardiac muscle and the perch exhibits all three types. We will see the smooth muscle lining the involuntary um, areas of the digestive system. The cardiac muscle will make up the heart. And then the skeletal muscle makes up what we call the meat of the uh, 
the fish. And when we look at the skeletal muscle, it being voluntary, um, one of the characteristics that we see is we see this bulk right here a muscle consisting of myotomes. And these myotomes that we see running along here are simply individual segments of muscle tissue. And each of those myotomes is going to be separated by a myoseptum. And the myotomes of the uh, perch are going to be arranged in a W or a zigzag pattern. And it's very uh, evident if you look right here. And that allows for powerful back and forth motion of the tail. And that provides a forward thrust for the, uh, the fish. Now the other thing I want you to notice is we can see that lateral line system right here. And with regard to the lateral line system, uh, the transverse septum, also called the horizontal septum, is going to correspond internally, we'll see that run across there, um, with that lateral line system. And that lateral line is located close to the external surface of the body so that when swimming the perch's mitomes can expand and contract to provide motion, and that lateral line will sense any detections and changes of the environment. The body cavity is called the salome, and it's divided into two regions. We have the anterior pericardial cavity that's going to surround the heart, and then we'll have this posterior peritoneal cavity, and this cavity right here is going to be where we uh, have the liver, the stomach, the intestines, the bladder, all of the main organs of the body. Now, these Holding those organs in place is a thin uh, sheet of tissue known as mesentery, and the mesentery just secures all of the organs in place within the body cavity. And many times it will help hold the blood vessels in place as well. The uh, perch has a complete digestive system. Food will enter the mouth. It will move through the pharynx, down through the esophagus, to the stomach. Once in the stomach, uh, the food is going to be mixed with acidic gastric juices and it's further broken down. From here, it will pass through to the pyloric cecum and then from the pyloric cecum right into the uh, intestines. The intestines would be the small and the large intestines and from there it would move on out through the anus. The digestive glands associated with the digestive process include the, li the uh, liver and the gallbladder and the pancreas. Now notice right here that we have the gonads, and that's just a generic name for the reproductive structures that are present, and that depends on the gender of the fish. The testes are going to be uh, paired and appear as cream-colored and smooth in texture, while the ovary will be more orange in color and more granular in texture, and that's usually because the ovary will be containing eggs. You can also see the swim bladder here. The swim bladder is a gaseous pocket within the body that maintains a neutral buoyancy with the help of the gas gland in the oval body. And um, this allows the fish to hover in the water. Now, do you know that uh, not all fish have swim bladders, especially bottom-dwelling fish such as flounder? They will lack a swim bladder. And so the swim bladder will appear as a membrane that you may see as you open up your body cavity. The perch breathes by extracting the oxygen that's present in the water in which it lives. Water is taken in by the mouth and it passes out through the gills. As it passes over the gills, it will move through these gill filaments located right here. Now those gill filaments have a feathered texture to increase the surface area for uh, oxygen absorption. And oxygen is transported through the gills into the body by a series of small capillaries that are located in the uh, smaller gill lamina. The uh, gills are somewhat fragile, as we can see looking right along here. And uh, they're protected by that tough uh, gill covering known as the operculum and by gill rakers. And these gill rakers are located within the gill arch and they help protect this fragile gill located in this area uh, by filtering out food particles that pass through the pharynx to the gills. The perch has a closed circulatory system composed of arteries, veins, and a two-chambered heart. The two-chambered heart means that the, uh, the perch has an upper atrium and a lower ventricle. Now technically the uh, heart is consisting of two chambers, however there are two other chambers that are closely associated with the heart and with the circulation. And these include the conus arteriosus, sometimes labeled the bulbous arteriosus, 
and the other is the sinus venosus. Now, blood will flow from the conus arteriosus to the ventral aorta through the afferent brachial arterioles. It does this to become oxygenated in the gills. Once it's oxygenated, the blood will travel from the efferent brachial arterioles back to the dorsal aorta, and now it's full of oxygen. And then it will circulate through the rest of the body. Once it's delivered throughout the body, the blood will return to the heart through the hepatic and the cardinal veins, and they will empty into the sinus arteriosus and then back into the heart.